Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us despite your busy schedule. I am Pavatra Sudhakar and I would be your presenter for today. I know that most of you have traveled with us through the Halloween Cyber Street and most of you might know what the crux of our sessions are. But for those of you who are new, here is a key takeaway for you. In the cyber world, there are just two categories of people. One category who have realized that they have been attacked and the other category of people who are yet to realize that they've been attacked. On that note, we are here with the last and final webinar for the entire Halloween Cyber Street series, the finale, which is your last time to fight cyber attacks. You don't have to take my word for it. Here is the Global Risks Report, where you can clearly see that cyber attacks and data theft have crawled their way and made it to the top five list for five risks to global stability. Few years back, up until a few years back, the word cybersecurity did not ring a bell for most organizations. But what has changed over the years? You may ask, how did cyber attacks find their way and make, how have they made it to the top five list? Here's what has changed over the years. The frequency at which cyber attacks occur. Last year, we had one cyber attack that occurred every 19 seconds. And this year, we have one cyber attack that occurs every 14 seconds. And next year, cybersecurity experts predict that one cyber attack would occur every 11 seconds. So if there's one message that is evident, it is cyber attacks are on the rise. And the second thing that has changed is the degree of cybersecurity defense by organizations. Though IT professionals are aware of the threat that lack of cybersecurity poses, 70% of them have stepped forward and admitted that their company is unprepared for a cyber attack. Now you know why cyber attacks pose a global threat. On that note, instead of focusing on why cybersecurity is important, let's take a look at how important cybersecurity is to organizations. This will be followed by a quick recap of most common cyber attacks we've seen this year and how organizations can fight them. Cyber security is undoubtedly the most critical topic. I performed a research on what is the reason behind the severeness of a criticality. The first point is what we just discussed. Cyber attacks are on the rise. As we speak, there is one cyber attack which is happening out there. And the second one is become a hacker, which is one dollar. For most of you who might have visited our house of ransomware, you know what I'm talking about. Gone are the days when people used to focus on software as a service and now ransomware is available as a service. What does this mean? It means the ransomware kit is available at a minimal cost so that amateur hackers can make use of it and attack small scale organizations. Now here, it is important to note that 43% of the cyber attacks performed in the past have targeted small scale organizations. How more frightening can it get? Cybersecurity is not just important because of cyber threats, but it is also important of regulation because of regulations such as HIPAA compliance and GDPR. Now these legal organizations compel IT organizations to comply with these regulations, failing which they will have to incur heavy fines. So cybersecurity is very important even if your organization wants to comply with better regulations. And here is the harsh reality check. All of us have smartphones these days. But did you know 
that 60% of the cyber attacks are performed on mobile devices. Why is it? Because mobile devices are the most preferred and the most accessible gateway for performing a cyber attack. Not just that, 70% of iOS applications have been hacked at some point or the other, and the same goes with Android applications. 80% of free Android applications have been hacked at some point. So just like I started saying, there are two categories of people. You might have either realized that you've been attacked or you are yet to realize. This is the harsh reality of today. Moving on, let's take a quick recap at the most dreaded cyber attacks this year. Starting with GANCRAB ransomware, we can clearly see that cyber criminals have no agenda of slowing down. What is this ransomware all about? Just like any other ransomware, GANCRAB ransomware will capture all your data, will encrypt it and demand ransom before decrypting your data. That being said, there is no guarantee if you can retrieve your data. One method of how this ransomware exploited networks is phishing. Now, we did attend the house of phishing on the day of Halloween, where one can understand the grave consequences of phishing. For those of you who knew, you will have to note a point that 92% of cyber attacks are performed through phishing. And what is phishing? It is nothing but a bait set by the cyber criminals in which the end users are deceived by throwing up a lookalike of the original site. So people get fooled and they end up submitting this sensitive information. This is how the cyber criminals catch hold of your personal data. The second attack is the blue key worm vulnerability. Microsoft describes this blue key worm vulnerability as a vulnerability that will jump from system to system, thereby injecting this vulnerability and exploiting the whole network. What is more scary about this vulnerability is it is pre-authenticated and does not require user interaction at all. So imagine just like how we silently install applications in the background, there are cyber criminals out there who are looking for ways to exploit your network by silently injecting a vulnerability. Browsers are often a common endpoint that most of us tend to overlook. But after the famous Evernote vulnerability attack, we can see a clear rise in the importance of browser security. Now, Evernote Web Clipper extension is one of the most common Google Chrome extension that has 4.5 million users. A vulnerability in this extension has paved way for cyber criminals to steal most of your personal information present in the active web session. Imagine you could be making a financial transaction or you could be creating a bank account. Nonetheless, it is your sensitive information that is stolen by the cyber criminals. This is just a common browser extension that we tend to add to our browser for user experience. How many of you out there are fans of Agent Smith, the iconic villain? It is fascinating to see that most of you have replied with an yes, I am a huge fan as well, but what is Agent Smith malware all about? You all of us have this tendency of installing applications from third party app stores and not just authenticated app stores. In that case, what happens is you have one compromised application or a set of compromised applications that people download from third party app, app stores. Now this app, these compromised apps would contain the malware kit and upon injecting themselves onto the mobile device, they unpack themselves and the core malware is attached to the device. Now, this is the easiest way cyber criminals can exploit a mobile device. Moving on to the next iconic villain, Joker. 
who isn't a fan of Joker. So let me just skip the part where I ask you if you are a fan and you can save yourself the trouble of typing in yes. Joker malware basically deals with compromised apps from the Play Store. We had close to 24 applications that were compromised and we had 4 lakh plus downloads of these applications. So you can see how easy it is to exploit a network just with the help of a compromised application. Now these applications contain a malware and pave way to a cyber attack in your network. Long story short, the cost of all the cyber crimes that we've had this year tallies to $600 billion. Now this is about the importance of cyber security and a few cyber attacks. Let's move on to the remediation part of a cyber attack. How can we bring down the numbers of 70, which is the percentage of organizations that are unprepared for a cyber attack? How can organizations prepare themselves? Irrespective of the type of cyber attack, every cyber attack has got a base structure to it. There are various stages at which a cyber attack enters a network and exploits the network. The first stage is scrutinization. One will have to scrutinize the entire network to look for vulnerable spots. It could be a vulnerable endpoint, and by endpoints, I mean your desktops, your laptops, your servers, your smartphones, and your tablets. You never know when an endpoint becomes vulnerable, especially in a large organization it becomes hard to keep a track of all the endpoints and to look for the vulnerable endpoints. So scrutinization of network is the first step that cyber criminals perform before they attack an organization. Let's see how you can make use of our endpoint management and security solution, which ultimately prevents cyber criminals from achieving their goal. Let's see how you can gain insights into your network be it browsers or devices or mobile devices. I shall take you quickly to the product and show you how you can catch a quick glimpse of your network status. So here you have the entire dashboard for all the vulnerabilities present in your network. This is Vulnerability Manager Plus, one of our products that helps you in assessing vulnerabilities and patching these vulnerable systems. So when you click on vulnerabilities, you get a clear dashboard that shows the severity summary of the vulnerabilities. I can see that I have 10 critical vulnerabilities and one important vulnerabilities. Now, one point that you have to make note of is it's not important to patch all the vulnerabilities, but it is important to take a stand, assess the vulnerabilities and patch them accordingly. Now, this dashboard will help me in assessing the severity of each vulnerability. Not just that, you can also see for how many vulnerabilities a patch is available. You'll just have to click on this and you can automate patch deployment. So for every vulnerability that I have and for a patch that is available, I just automate the patch deployment so I don't have to worry about staying at top critical updates. The next status that you can gather from this dashboard is the vulnerability age matrix, which tells you when was the vulnerability published and when was it discovered in your network. Now, where does this parameter play an important role? The last house we had in our, the previous house that we had in our Halloween cyber street was about zero day attacks. Of course, it is an interesting topic to cybersecurity experts and cyber criminals because a flaw has been exposed and there is no patch released by the vendor. How more fascinating can it get for a cyber criminal? That is where this age matrix will help. You. And we also have a data that says zero day vulnerabilities detected in your network. Fortunately, there are zero day vulnerabilities. There are zero zero day vulnerabilities in my network. 
Next would be the analysis of browsers. But before that, let me just show you another important parameter, which is USB devices. USB devices are quite inevitable in every organization. That being said, how many of us have control over the data that is copied from our system to the USB device and the data that is copied from the USB device to the system? Device Control Plus, another security product of our solution suite, helps you do just that. With the help of this dashboard, you can see what are the files that are being transferred from the computer to the USB device and you can also see what are the files that are being transferred from the USB device to the computer. The best part is I can drill down further and see what are the types of files that are being copied to and from my machine. The file extensions could be executable files or it could be image files or compressed files. This level of visibility will help an IT administrator to see what went wrong and what file became harmful. The next avenue that we would tap into would be mobile devices. Now, with the help of this dashboard, you can just see how many devices in your network have blacklisted applications. Every organization would have a set of applications that should not be used within an organization. So these are the blacklisted applications that you can prohibit. And the best part is, upon detecting such prohibited applications, you can go ahead and uninstall them automatically. So you can see that this dashboard gives me details about the blacklisted applications, how many devices have blacklisted applications, and how many applications have I discovered in total. Let me quickly show you how you can analyze browsers as well. So let me just take you to the product. We have Browser Security Plus, another security solution of our suite, which helps you gain insights over the most commonly used browsers and the browsers which have harmful extensions. So upon clicking browsers, I can see the computer health status. I can see how many computers do not comply with the security standards of my organization. I can also see that 10 extensions used across my network are malicious. So this level of visibility helps me in understanding what are the vulnerable spots in my network. This was the first stage of a cyber attack. The next stage of cyber attack is the actual process of injecting a malware into the network. This can be prevented using various methods because you could see from the previous stage that it's not just your desktops or your laptops, but every endpoint from a port to a firewall, every endpoint on your network is a gateway to a cyber attack. So there are various areas that we have to focus on if we'll have to prevent the injection of a malware. Again, let me take you to the product and show you how it can be done. We have a feature for automating patch management, which is nothing but for your Windows, Mac, Linux, and third-party applications. You assess the vulnerabilities present across all these systems and you automate patch deployment. So I can just see that I have two systems that have failed the deployment and two systems that require REAP. Now, these are the insights that I get upon deploying patches. The next area of protection would be applications. Now, for blacklisted applications, all you have to do is just enlist all the list of prohibited software. Let me just show you how it can be done. When you click on prohibited software, you have the option to add prohibited software. Now, every time this software is detected in the network, I can automatically uninstall this software by configuring the auto uninstall policy. How many of you have heard of Keylogger? The reason I'm asking you this is because Keylogger is a very common tool that just, that just measures the keystrokes of your computer. But in the hands of cyber criminals, this could be a potentially harmful tool. How is because 
Now, these kind of executables do not get installed on your network, but they just get executed. They perform the ransomware attack and they get removed without any traces. For these kind of executables, you just have to add a policy and add the executable by providing the name of the executable. That way, you can be sure that this malicious application will not even get installed on your network. The next would be securing mobile devices. When it comes to securing mobile devices, we will have to look at securing the device itself. For that, we have, in, we have a feature called geo-tracking and geo-fence. With geo-tracking, people who have the tendency of losing phones, please pay attention. With geo-tracking feature, you can locate the lost devices. And with geo-fencing, what you can do is set a virtual fence around your organization and ensure that only certain applications are used within the fence and certain applications are blocked outside of the fence. The second step of securing your mobile devices would be securing the content present on the mobile devices for which we have content management. With content management, you can ensure that all your corporate data is accessed only from authenticated devices. This way, what we do is we prevent the third stage of cyber attack, which is exfiltration. Exfiltration is the process of carrying whatever data is stolen back to the attacker's home base for further analysis and exploitation. One will have to control any data that is leaked from your organization. One best way to do it is to manage your content. And the other best way is just like I told you, you can whitelist and blacklist USB devices with just zero trust policy. What is zero trust policy? You completely do not trust any USB devices unless and until they are whitelisted. So when they are whitelisted, it is only these devices that can be accessed by the end user. To ensure that there is no exfiltration that goes on, you can configure a few policies to control the data that is copied from and to your computer. These were the three stages which forms the base structure of any cyber attack. This is how organizations can fight every cyber attack possible but the time is now or never in the increasingly dangerous digital world outside it is important that you secure all of your interconnected devices because it is these interconnected devices that power your business cobbled together Point products might not be effective, but what your organization actually needs is an integrated solution with which you can manage and secure your endpoints. Now, these are the list of products that Endpoint Management and Security Suite offers to your organization. All you need is just one solution in place and you can ensure that you secure all of your endpoints. That brings us to the end of the session. I hope you found the session informative. Please fill the survey form that's available for you at your end for personalized demo. And we shall be more than happy to schedule a personalized demo at your convenience for any product that you would like to watch in action. It is on a scale of one to five, with five being the highest. Thank you. And we are opening the floors for Q&A session. If at all you've got any questions, please keep it coming our way. I would be more than happy to take your questions. So I can just see there are a few questions coming our way. Lovely. This is one question that is asked, which is, could you please explain more about the endpoint management solutions that you offer? I will take this chance to explain what our products are capable of. So as you can see from this image, we have endpoint management solutions such as Desktop Central and Desktop Central MSP, which predominantly helps you in 
managing your desktops, laptops, mobile devices, browsers, all of it from a central location. Imagine the pain of having to manage multiple tools. Let's say you use one tool for managing your desktops, other tool for managing your laptops, and a third tool for managing your mobile devices. So instead of managing the devices, you end up managing the solutions that you use for managing these devices. Now Desktop Central and Desktop Central MSP is our remote monitoring and management software for managed service providers. These two solutions could help you solve this problem. Next, we have Mobile Device Manager Plus, which is a standalone product for managing and securing your mobile devices from a single platform. We also have Remote Access Plus, which predominantly deals with remote technician support. If we have any IT help as technicians out there, we hear you. We actually know the pain of taking a remote control of computers and troubleshooting them. Remote Access Plus has multiple options for remote control that helps you with seamless troubleshooting. As per the security management is concerned, we have Browser Security Plus, which is purely for managing your browsers. We have USB Device Management, which helps you in controlling the access of USB devices. And we have Patch Management, which helps you in automated patch management. Before I leave, there is just one piece of information I would like to give you. A couple of days back, when I was just tapping into the cybersecurity news, I was able to see that in the US, we had a cyber attack. When I started analyzing the root cause of this attack, I was able to find out that it is just an outdated software that has led to this cyber attack. So when you have numerous applications in your network, you lose a track of what are the applications that need to be updated. Now, these updates don't just contain features for enhancing user experience, but also contain patches for known security flaws. That being said, it is evident how important automating this patch management is. So we have patch management products which help you in patching all your endpoints, be it your servers or your desktops, your laptops, or legacy applications. OS deployment helps you in imaging and automating OS. On that note, most of you might have heard of Windows 10 migration. So we have Windows 7 end of life support announced by Microsoft, after which anybody who's running on Windows 7 will be exposed to cyber attacks. They are vulnerable because Microsoft will stop support for Windows 7. So OS Deployer will help you in automating OS imaging and deployment, and you can seamlessly migrate from Windows 7 to Windows 10. This is the entire suite of products that we have for the endpoint management and security. We can just see that we have a lot of questions coming away. But since we are at the end of the session, we would just like to take these questions offline. Thank you all for joining us and hope you found the session informative.